Instagram live. I hope you're doing good. I hope you're fine. How are you treating life? My name is Tosin Babalola and um, I just want to quickly do this as a writer and a follow-up to a post that I shared uh, yesterday. Yes, and I like to do that a lot because sometimes I feel like my designs don't capture all of the thoughts and perception I have in my heart and even the caption section <laughs> does not capture it and there are, there are people who may not actually take out all of the time required to read and digest what I have put in the caption. I feel like some people connect better when they watch you know the video like this so I would expand and expound on some of the things that I said and primarily what I talked about yesterday is the importance of defining your goal before you enter into a mentoring relationship. A lot of people have entered into a mentoring relationship casually without defining the goal. So speaking from a mentee's perspective, you are expected to know that aspect of your life where you need assistance and you need to know where you're going actually the first thing is to know where you're going who do you want to become what kind of assistance do you need is it technical assistance or is it just um, advice right and do you know people who have gone on that journey and, and have succeeded on that journey and then also you need to know where you are currently what are the things that you've done so far in that regard how have you been able to help yourself so far because really your mentor wants to see how much you have done they want to see that you're making an attempt and then what exactly is that limiting force what is the thing that is uh, a weakness what is the thing that you're really struggling at right so you need to be able to articulate all of these things and when i say articulate i mean you need to identify them and probably write them down down document them right and then look around you to see who best fits to be your mentor then you can initiate that relationship when you initiate that relationship make sure that all of these uh, needs that you have itemized are articulated you know are discussed with the person i know it is difficult but you just need to find a way and let the person also know how or why they fit into that category, you know, to be the person, to be the go-to person. Yeah, I, I really don't want to overflog that because the emphasis that I want to make tonight is about the fact that when, it, when the purpose of a thing is not defined, abuse is inevitable. Now, this is not related to 
just uh, tangible items. So for instance, if I say if the purpose of this pen is not defined, then abuse is inevitable, which means that if I do not clearly uh, tell myself that this pen is meant to be used only for writing, I am very uh, liable or there is a tendency for me to begin to use this pen, this pen as a matchstick right and it's very possible for me to start to use it as a uh, diffuser stick or something or for railings of cotton or something so it's it's that means if i do not properly define the goal or the purpose or the the the, the use of this pen then i'm likely to use it for something contrary or something else totally different from what it's originally uh, meant to be used for the same thing applies to you know intangible things such as your relationship with your mentor right when you do not define what you're supposed to be doing with this person is this person a relationship coach to you is this person a spiritual coach to you is this person a financial uh, uh, mentor to you In what area of your life exactly is this person supposed to be touching on when that is not defined you now begin to find scenarios where both parties begin to cross boundaries and be no longer respect one another's boundaries and you know one of the things that this can cause <laughs> is that you now begin to have sort of undue entitlement mentality and it's vice versa it's not just from mentor it's not just from mentee to mentor sometimes it's also from mentor to mentee where this person feels like they just have a control of you right and they feel like they can demand or request anything at will and at any time that's not supposed to be and sometimes it's because we don't clearly define excuse me and sometimes it's because we don't clearly define the goal from the beginning. I'm a very practical and pragmatic person. So I like to give examples. But I believe what I've said is clear enough because I'm actually going to be expounding on it when you know as time goes on. But primarily, this is meant to be a very short Instagram live session. Another thing I find to be strange in mental mental relationship is the socioeconomic imbalance. Socioeconomic imbalance in mentoring relationship. So you find a scenario where you and your mentor are not actually at par when it comes to socioeconomic status. I'm not saying you need to be as rich as your mentor. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that both of you are actually not in the same class. And I, I think that a lot of us walk in error by putting pressure, you know, on, on ourselves just to meet up with the standard of the other person so you found yourself this mentor and this person is extremely rich right and then they begin to uh in a subtle way put pressure on you but you're not aware right so this person is insisting that um you have to come with them you know to a certain place and and um this is how things must go and that is how things must go or they feel like um you're supposed to do something right and they you have to do it in the way that they want it and the way that they like it but you're not in the same class okay let's say for instance you're supposed to have a meeting with your mentor right i i, I don't want to get into trouble with this and I don't want you, anyone to take it out of context, but that's the only uh, example that comes to my mind. And you you want to put up an if you're, you're supposed to meet with your no. Let me know use that example. You you want to meet you want to put up an event, right? And ideally, this is the kind of place where you can afford, and this is the kind of setting and ambience you can create based on your budget. But your mentor is giving you suggestions that are totally off the chart like it's not within your budget at all and because they are mentors like they're giving you all the reasons you should you know take their advice and but this thing is clearly outside of your budget and you don't know how to state it gently and politely right 
you need to learn it. You need to learn how to state it because that is socioeconomic imbalance in your relationship. And you probably even need to address it because sometimes it, you're, not, you're not supposed to walk away. You're not supposed to run away. <laughs> you're not supposed to slam the door. You know, a lot of us have made mistakes in the past and that is why we're able to, you know, look back and, and see that other people or even look around us and see that other people need this kind of uh, 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 knowledge sharing and 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 um, and advice and insights right so you're not just supposed to walk away like that you should find a very polite way you know to communicate this and say oh i'm so sorry you know i would have loved to take this advice actually i consider it very very invaluable by the way that word invaluable means something you really esteem and something that is priceless <laughs> so i consider this very invaluable but i think that for now i want to you know, work within my budget because for crying out loud, this person is not sponsoring <laughs> your events. Do you understand? Yeah, so those are the kind of things that happen when there is a con socioeconomic imbalance between you and your mentor. The mentor needs to watch it, the mentee also needs to watch it so that you know both parties or either parties do not fall under on due pressure. Either party should not fall under undue pressure. So I've said like two or three things. First of all, the fact that um, you need to define the goal and the purpose, the objective and the aim of your mentoring relationship. And you need to be able to articulate it to the person who you are entering the relationship with. Number two is the fact that you 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 do not need to have a mentor who has abused the relationship, right? Uh, you do not need to have a mentor who has an undue entitlement mentality. And you as the mentee as well, you should not have an entitlement mentality. I mean, the fact that somebody does you a favor the first time, you need to be sensitive and look at their body language, their posture, their position, right? The fact that they did it for you the first time does not mean they are interested in doing it for you the second time, right? So we really just need to be very, very careful and be sure that we are not taking on due advantage of privilege, rights, and access that people have given to us. And then the third thing that I said is um, for you to be aware uh, of socioeconomic imbalance in a mentoring relationship. Do not place the other party under undue pressure and neither should you fall victim of pressure from the from another party, right? Because you really want to match up with their socioeconomic standard. I hope that you have learned one or two things uh, tonight out of the three that I have said. Thank you very much for joining. I will be expanding ex founding <laughs> these three points hopefully right maybe via youtube channel or <clears throat> just some other longer instagram live session or you know just find a guest or someone a friend to you know chit chat with someone who would be willing to share personal experiences but you stay safe stay sane until then and have a wonderful time Bye bye